Hey, honey? Yeah, what's up? I'm Fen, and this is Retro Review, a review show where we go through my copious amounts of RPG books, uh, out of print, um, uh, my copious amounts of out of print RPG books, gaming magazines, and other gaming paraphernalia, paraphernalia one at a time. And to keep me from rambling, we have Laura. Hey, everybody. So to keep us on track tonight, I'm going to go through a list of questions. All right, I'll start us off. So what are we reviewing tonight? We're reviewing Dragon Magazine number 291, the gnome-themed issue. Okay, and where did this one come from? This one also came from uh, B. Dalton. I think it was... Yeah, this one and the next one... I know where the other next one came from. The next one came from another place, but this is a B. Dalton. It's before I got my subscription to Dragon Magazine. Okay. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, B. Dalton, uh, do you want to give us a quick synopsis of the articles inside? This is a gnome-themed issue, so I apologize in advance if I seem a little critical. I have never been the biggest fan of gnomes, and I'll explain that at the end of the episode, so I don't ramble. Anyways, the first article is the profile, by, uh, profile on Robin D. Laws. Uh, it's a one-page bio on Robin and the games he's worked on as a designer. Seems he did a one of the cool th ones that stood out was he did a Dying Earth RPG based on Jack Vance's stories, and the Dying Earth novel series is actually where D and D's magic system was actually heavily inspired from. Hmm. That whole spells per That's day cool. and stuff like that. So, okay, the spell levels and everything. So, it, it's something for me to find and check out. Is that? <clears throat> Dying Earth RPG. Yeah. Uh, the next one is the Up on a Soapbox column by Gary Gygax. Uh, this month he talks about level 6 of Castle Greyhawk and how the greed of massive treasures, treasures was a good lore to keep the players returning to a death trap dungeon. Basically they, they went down they easily found this room full of scrolls and they're like, oh if we found that in one room what else is down here? So they kept going back down trying to find more and more treasure until they found like this place is this place is too deadly for us we need to we found the door to go to the next level let's just let's just go down to level six and not deal with this level anymore mm -hmm. but the greed definitely kept them coming back and coming back and walking into more and more death traps so yeah greed is good for a dm Anytime you can play on a player's greed, I've played on Josh Scott's greed so many times. <laughs> when we played D&D together, just, I know, I'm like, I know if I put a pile of treasure out there, he's just like, that's going to be mine. How am I going to make this mine? Hmm, who do I need to kill right now? I need to kill back. Always, always just, just could bait him with treasure. Still can. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Uh... Next article is uh, Study in Jest. It's at 10 pages on gnome life. And yeah, if you like gnomes and want to know about the gnomish lifestyle, it's a good article. Next one article is the Little, Little Olympics. Uh, four different games slash sports played by gnomes. Granted, these can be resized to make them like... Basically, it felt like reading like the American Ninja, the like the Gladiator contest they would have on TV, uh -huh. American Gladiators. Yeah, it's kind of basically that type of stuff. Um, next article is Abuse Your Illusions, Tips on uh, Illusions and Designing New Ones. Uh, illusion subgroups such as Figments, Glamours, Patterns, and Phant Phantoms and Shadows. It also gives eight new illusion spells. Uh, illusionary Feast of Food Appears compels the victims to pig out and only pig out. Uh, illusionary Pit makes the victim think they are standing on the edge of a bottomless pit. So some Ooh, cool little like ways to mess with people's heads. Uh, Bazaar of the Bazaar, the magical item column they have in Dragon Magazine. Uh, 
time to time. Uh, this month is gnome gear, so you got like badger armor for your war badger that you ride into battle. Why also, are you riding on a badger? Because you're a gnome and the badger is huge. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Then war fox harnesses, so you can ride your war fox into battle. Uh, a mushroom cap that lets you turn, basically make it so you look like a giant mushroom because you're a gnome and you're tiny. Right. Uh, the portable breach, basically the, you know how like in the Bugs Bunny cartoons, they take the hole, they throw up in the wall and they'd be able to go through the hole into the other wall, then grab the hole and pull it through the wall and escape. Yeah, one of those. And uh, flashbacks, so basically little things that go and yeah, days your opponent. Um, next article is called, You Can Pick Your Friends, uh, Ideas for Character Backgrounds that Relates to Family, Complete with Adventuring Hooks, such as uh, Rival Sibling Needs to be Rescued, Bounty Hunters are After Your Twin Cousin, uh, Your Sibling Has uh, Stepped Into the PC's Role for the Party, Like You've Gotten Kidnapped and They've Got a, Like Your Little Brother Has to Come Along and Like Try to Rescue You, uh, Kidnapped Fiance, the big bad evil guy is a returning villain of the hero's family, so it's basically like great grandpa fought this thing, so now you've got to fight it. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of having an evil twin. Uh, there are also random tables for figuring out family size, background, and organization. Uh, <clears throat> are these all for gnomes? Or just no, for everybody, okay. but gnomes are really big in the family. Mm -hmm. um, water, water everywhere is rules for underwater combat. Again, for everybody, it's, it, not all the articles in here are gnomes. Okay. All right. So it's not like water gnomes. Yep. Uh, Troopers is a short story about a known carnival troop on a ship showing wonders to a human traveler about the world. Um, the Sondar, uh, Elminster's Guide to the Realm article, Map of a Cavern System. Dungeon and the Forgotten Realm setting, something you can easily port over to. I need a cavern system dungeon to use for a game. Uh, class Axe, the Gnome Giant Killer. It's a prestige class for gnomes that focus on fighting giants. Because, you know, they're tiny and they gotta have that David versus Goliath theme. So, that would that be. Because they're, they're tiny, so what it would the be. Giants are actual giants. So, you got like little tiny gnome, big freaking giant. So it would be like a giant for our standards. Yeah, yeah our well. standards. Okay. Uh, campaign news, updates on the latest adventures from the Living Greyhawk Worldwide Campaign. Part of 3rd edition uh, releasing along with the Forgotten Realms stuff was to uh, create a living campaign where basically the choices of the players around the world would actually affect like the storyline and how it played out and everybody could be part of this big campaign going on and different stuff would happen every month and they introduce like this new thing happened and it was it was kind of cool but uh, they were basically talking about a bunch of the new adventures that were coming out none of the adventures really struck me as must plays like I, I like one of them was like bodyguarding a groom on his wedding uh, a mystery elven chest was has been found and Find the guy who got some guy's wife pregnant and explore a sinkhole on a farm full of gems. Mm -hmm. It's just like, that sinkhole is probably a bait for something. Why are we finding the dude that seduced your wife? And, oh yeah, we gotta take this other dude to get to his wedding. It's just really cliche side quest yeah. type stuff. Um, uh, next article was Demogorgon's Champions, four new Death Knight NPCs to use in your games. I thought those were pretty cool, just having some... I always like the idea of the Death Knight, the big bad anti-paladin, you know, undead warrior, undead unholy warrior riding on a horse, showing up to lead the battle to kill everybody. So it's like... Death, the leader, the, the four men of the apocalypse. Four horse, yeah, it's basically like... A, an evil NPC version of that is what the Death Knight is. Um, 
Next article is People's State of Mordengard. It's for the Chainmail game. It's a two-page article about a Dwarven Nation used as a new faction. Chainmail was the D&D miniatures game uh, that came out at the same time as 3rd edition. This was like pewter minis that you had to paint yourself. Like last week when I was talking about how they were trying to tell you how to paint faces. That game. Um, it also has stats for the Stone Spike, a forearm earth elemental with rocky spikes all over it. Those were uh, D&D stats they had for it in the article. Uh, <clears throat> next one, next article is Command Points. Uh, previews for the new D&D movie, uh, new D&D minis that were coming out. Uh, again, these are for the pewter chainmail minis that they were going to release. Um, so basically just a, a an article that's basically just advertisement hidden as an article. Mm -hmm. uh, next article was Sage Advice, the FAQ column they put in all the Dragon magazines. Uh, this one's focusing on planar issues because I believe this was right around when the planar handbook came out. Uh, and there was a lot of questions people had about the bags of holding and the astral plane. It's the whole complex thing of how do you have an have an extra dimensional inside extra dimensional space inside of an ethereal space. And there's always been the whole thing of like if you put a bag of holding into a portable hole because the portable hole opens up to the astral plane, and the bag of holding is extra dimensional space. If you put one inside of the other. One way it implodes, the other way it explodes. So either you blo either it blows up and damages everybody else around it, or you can suck everybody around it into the astral. I think, yeah, if you put the bag of holding into the portable hole, it just kind of like creates a mini black hole and sucks you to the astral plane. And if you try to put the astral plane inside of the extra dimensional space, the whole thing just blows up. <clears throat> So a lot of people had questions about what happens when you use a bag of holding in the astral plane. Um, you're not trying to put one inside it. it ugh, just just leave the bags of holding at home. Um, yeah. DM's toolbox column. Uh, it's, it was a monthly column it's called the DM's toolbox. This month it was tips on how to bluff as the DM. Uh, give you know basically the you know if you're Sometimes you're in a situation where you basically you're like, yeah, you gotta bluff. You gotta like make the players think that something's actually the way it is, so you can get them to do the thing you want them to do, or to move the story, to move the story along. So it told that uh, every bluff has four parts that it needs. It needs to be believable. Uh, there needs to be some doubt on the part of the players in their success. There needs to be bad consequences, and it also needs to include a difficult choice. Hmm. Okay. And uh, it also has some tips on how to avoid uh, tells when you're bluffing. Tells are things that some people do when they're when they're nervous. And one of my tells was always that I my breathing would change whenever I drew a card when I was playing Magic, and somebody could tell whether or not I had the the card I needed, or if I didn't draw it based on based on the on how my breath would change. I was like, what? That's really one of my tells? They're like, yeah, it is. I'm like, Phew. So I tried working on controlling my breath while I was playing. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Uh, so those are the articles. Those are the articles. Um, which of them are you going to be keeping? <sighs> I mean... The cavern system dungeon seems good. The the stuff about family relations tables and stuff like that for them that you can pick your friends. Mm -hmm. Probably keep that. Um, maybe some of the illusion stuffs, but all the stuffs on gnomes I can throw right out a window. Which leads me to my whole thing. Like I told you at the end, I would not. I would wait until the end. I'm, I'm taking a few minutes to ramble. Okay. Keep an eye on the clock for me. <clears throat> Don't let me go over four. Okay. I dislike gnomes because the standard sword and sorcery gnome is the tinkerer gnome. And that wants to build like the Rube Goldberg machine that does this to do this to do this to do this. And it just makes the game so much more complex of like all this little gnomish stuff that's always happening that 
and plus it's the whole the size differences and having to have the the specialty mounts and like weird stuff that like I always ignored all the gnome stuff while playing because it was just like this seems like way too overkill and way too cutesy for like my level of hack and slash everybody is probably going to die D and D like I just gnomes just never fit fit into my vision of what a D and D world should be like. There shouldn't be a bunch of clockwork mechanical because it really does like you introduce tinkerer gnomes and you're like two steps away from your entire D and D world turning into a, a steampunk from the uh, like steampunk takeover of the Renaissance Fair where you got gizmos, contraptions, and all sorts of stuff running around. And I'm like, you don't want that to happen. So in my D and D world, gnomes are an endangered species because, and it's the, also the other thing, everybody always bring, tries to create a tinkerer gnome that can invent gunpowder. So I decided to work that into the backstory of my world. Yes, gnomes invented gunpowder way, way back when the elves ruled the world and subjugated all the rest of the races. The gnomes, they discovered the gnomes. They're like, ooh, this would be a great race to, to have to do, to do building and construction work for us. Yes, we'll, we'll bring them under the of an empire and they'll work for us and they'll do what we say or else. Because this was before the drow separated and all the evil elves went underground. The elven empire was very much a lot of assholes. Anyways, yeah. the, the gnomes, in, gnomes do what they do. They tinker and they invent gunpowder. Well, the problem was is when they invented gunpowder, the, the first gnome to figure out how to make gunpowder made way too much of it. And ended up basically uh, blowing up an entire city. Oh. The remains of that city and the city that got built on top of the remains that is known as bomb. Because the fact that a bomb went off and destroyed the entire original city. Mm -hmm. Sequentially, after that, every gnome that ends up discovering gunpowder basically started blowing up stuff. So the elves said, we don't want nothing to do with you, shipped all the elves off to a very far corner of the world, the gnomes off to the far corner of the world, to a place called No Man's Land. Spelled with a G. <clears throat> In No Man's Land, there is the last surviving gnomes that have not killed themselves because of gunpowder. They have banned the creation of gunpowder in their kingdom in order to keep themselves from killing themselves. It does have clockwork gizmos and all sorts of crazy stuff like that, but nobody goes there and it's way off in the corner and that's where all the gnomes are. There's no other gnomes. They got rounded up by the elves and shipped off to their own island nation and forgotten about. And that's what I do. I tell everybody, they're like, I want to play a gnome. I'm like, you live on an island nation on the far side of the world and if you show up, everyone is going to be afraid of you because gnomes are known for just making things go boom and everybody dies when they see a gnome. Because that's what happens with gnomes. So, just, I push gnomes off to, I, I, my D&D world is a little bit racist when it comes to gnomes. I just push them off to the side and I'm like, no gnomes. Not dealing with clockwork contraptions and I'm not dealing with the whole fact of like, ha oh, I'm an artificer. I made gunpowder. It's like, yeah, you're going to blow yourself up and die. <sighs> because gunpowder does completely unbalance the game because and even ways I've seen trying to make guns be good in if Pathfinder tried doing guns mm -hmm. and the guns in Pathfinder suck. They are horribly underpowered. Every time I'm like, let people play with those things, they're like, this doesn't work. I'm like, I know. And that's because I'm not going to use the actual stuff that's from 3rd edition D&D that actually is really what guns could you do, which is more in line with D20 Modern, which basically makes a gun a really powerful weapon and completely unbalances the game. Mm -hmm. So no gnomes means no clockwork, no gunpowder, no guns. So no gnomes in my D&D world. Except for on their little island. It's on their little island that nobody knows about except for me. And that's the way it's going to stay. Well, you, you just told them. Well, they, 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 they know that there's a world, there's a whole island of gnomes with advanced technology out there. Nobody knows where it is but the DM. Uh, now, if they try to go find it, I'm going to throw every single sea monster I can at you. Don't 
go and find the gnomes. So leads my into my question: What's your most? What's your least liked race? At, what is your least liked race in D and D? Leave that in the comments section down below, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Bye, everybody. Hey, everybody! Thanks for staying till the end of the episode. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe. Follow us on Facebook at Board Barista Productions. And if you want to support us, Patreon link at the bottom.